I love researching a new topic. I find it makes my projects more interesting if I can ground them with realistic events, environments, or something that we can relate to. So here are my four pieces of advice I'd like to give you when it comes to research to make your own webcomic. Because when I start a new story for a webcomic or even just an illustration, it starts with research. Just like the current webcomic I'm working on right now, Jim Reel, Paranormal Investigator. Hi, I'm Dion. You're currently looking at me working on a few panels from page two, which are already up on my site to read as we speak. I'll leave a link in the description below where you can read it, but what I mostly wanted to talk about today is why I do research and why you should do it too. Now for some, research might sound like the boring part of creation. Drawing the art is cool, writing the script is cool, but research, that's for nerds, right? Well, luckily, if you're into comics, you probably are a nerd already. Embrace that for a start. I'm probably the biggest nerd I know, and that gives me the energy to dive into these sorts of topics. You see, research comes with all these connotations of sitting down with books, writing notes, long hours in the library, or late nights reading Wikipedia. But for me, research gives me the foundation to build the story on, but I don't want to make a boring webcomic, so I definitely don't want to find inspiration for those foundations by doing something boring. For instance, with the webcomic you're watching me create right now, I knew I wanted the story to be set in the 70s so I could draw inspiration from those old action and horror films from that era that I love to watch so much. It gave me the opportunity to watch a few of my favourite thrillers from the 70s to give me inspiration for clothing, cars, architecture, hairstyles and more. And I love watching movies, so this made research all the more easy. Some of those films were titles like Dirty Harry, The Mechanic, Shaft, Enter the Dragon, and I can't forget the Sean Connery, Roger Moore era of James Bond. They were classics. But other genres, which I'm really into, included Blade, The Wolfman, and I can't help but watch Predator or Sigourney Weaver in Alien and Aliens at least once a year. It's these types of films that I used as inspiration for my story. Watching how a director frames a scene, uses lighting and shadow to move your eye to the right spot of the frame, pacing of a scene, and how to create interesting dialogue how textures, clothing and styles can make a scene or character feel real and have purpose. And here is how you can use it to your advantage too, to help you develop your ideas and create your own webcomic. First of all, come up with one idea that you want to create. If it's to be a long, ongoing series, make sure it's something you really enjoy and feel energised about. A good prompt is to look at what other types of books do you read or movies you like to watch. Not just webcomics, but topics you really get inspiration from. Movies, of course, are my main source of inspiration, and you can look to those too. What movies do you particularly like to watch again and again? If you're into the romance genre, but thinking of making an all-out action webcomic, perhaps think about making it more of a romantic action webcomic with more emphasis on the romance. For the longest time, I put off making a horror action webcomic such as Jim Reel because I thought so many people would be turned away from the gory images or the horrific creatures I love to draw. Turns out it was the opposite. By making this webcomic, I've found a topic that I'm fond of, and because I'm genuinely interested in the types of things I'm drawing and writing about, people reading the story can feel that too, and they enjoy it more. The second thing to do is find your medium. This works for both writers and artists. What I mean by medium is think about how do you want to create the work. Some people like to work on computers, some people like to work on paper. Some people write with a pencil, others on a laptop. Some people paint with brushes and paint, others use a stylus on a tablet. Find the way to make your art at the most comfortable and satisfying way for you. Researching mediums is not just fun, but inspirational. I found artists using materials I've used in the past in ways I never thought you could. And this is in no way intended to sound like a disrespect to Marvel or DC, but I've got a copy of How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way. And it does give some incredibly valuable and insightful knowledge of how to create comic book artwork for the mainstream comics. But it doesn't take into account the thousands of artists out there who work a different way because those artists don't produce what comic book companies call the house style. Instead, what you want to do is find the techniques and the tools to use with them that are going to make the art you like to make. But make sure it's not going to break your back or your bank balance to do it every time. Let's be serious here. If you're making a webcomic, even a short one, it can sometimes be a bit of a journey. And my third bit of advice would be to not overextend yourself. Don't make any huge promises to yourself and work within your limits. I try to produce at least one page per week of the comic so I can get it out there and update the website on a Monday. I know I'm able to make more pages, but I feel like to do that, I wouldn't be able to put in the quality I can now for each page. 
I have to fit the pages in around my other work, such as running my courses for illustration, teaching my students, client work, and running a business. So it is tricky to manage the time to produce more than one page a week. Plus I've got to spend time with the family, of course. So I would recommend work out what you can do that isn't going to break you and destroy what started out as a joy for you. There is nothing worse than being creative, yet feeling like that creativity has become a burden to you, your family, and your friends. And here's a fourth piece of advice I think is very important. Just start. It's really easy to over-research topics, tools, and techniques. I think they refer to it as analysis paralysis, where you become so overwhelmed by the amount of information you can't think of how to start your project. To overcome this, just start the project. The best part of research is trying things out as you go, finding out what you like and what you don't, what works and what doesn't. Failing at something is one of the best ways to learn what you are good at and what you are not, what you can do and what you can't. Become a scientist of webcomics. Experiment until you get the right solution to the problem. Failing will teach you how to do something better the next time. So don't be afraid to start that project and it may not work out the first or second time, but if you keep going, it will be what you always dreamt it will be. My own webcomic I'm working on right now is a product of many failed attempts and projects that didn't really give me the joy that I was seeking. Not like this project is anyway. This story has something special about it that I can't quite explain, but I think you'll recognize it when you read it. Well, I think that about wraps it up for today. Good luck with your own webcomic project and please feel free to ask me any questions in the comments. I'll do my best to help in any way I can. Let's talk again soon.